Uh, thank uh, Susanna and Emil for uh, inviting me again to this uh, event. It's always a pleasure to prepare uh, talk for this. Um, so if you've been to the my previous presentation, uh, the, it was uh, mostly maybe three quarters of Fourier transform and then uh, maybe one quarter of singular value decomposition. So I thought this this will be a good uh, time to maybe slightly dive deeper into into this uh, topic, which to be honest, I actually first heard while doing this uh, uh, the Moku Moku session. So it was a very interesting uh, learning experience for me. So this uh, talk is based on this uh, MML book we are using. And um, there will be minimal writing in the slides, just so you know. So if you're gonna try to use uh, this uh, slide, which will be uploaded, both this Google slide and the collab, which um, you will see later. Uh, I think it's better to, to review this uh, with the recording that is, that also will be shared by, in the YouTube channel of uh, MLT. Okay. Hmm. So I'd like us to start on uh, the same footing first. Some simple ideas that uh, you've probably mastered already or, or not, but since uh, we, we need to establish some uh, similar uh, understanding here. So, okay, our favorite, it should be favorite if you're doing uh, machine uh, learning, this is dot product. So I would say this, this is one mathematical way of uh, measuring similarities between vectors. Let's, let's forget the normalized for now. So um, let's say this is statement. What, what does this statement? Uh, do you see my, Emil, do you see my mouse, my R cursor? Yes, 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 yes. Thank yes. you, thank you. Okay, so sir, this statement says if, uh, x1 dot product, forgive my lack of uh, notation skills in, uh, in Google Colab. So x1 dot x0 or x0 is bigger than x2 dot x0. Then we can say that uh, x1 is more similar to x0 than x2 because it has bigger dot product. This is only true if you have normalized, you're using normalized vectors. Otherwise, it could be the case that this guy here is bigger even if, the, even if this guy has a similar direction to x0 than x2. The normalized here, the reason it is in quotations is because it depends on the situation. So what are we measuring here in this statement is uh, say similarities of, of what? So what I want to measure now is just for simplicity is just the direction, right? So if you, you are measuring similarities of direction, then the notion of size or length is, uh, means nothing. It's, it's, it just produces a bias. So in order to take out the, the unfairness in, in this uh, study, we, we would divide, hence normalize, the, the vectors by their length. And then this statement would be true. So if indeed, if the dot product of these two is bigger than the dot product of these two, then indeed x1 points in a similar direction to x0 than this one. So you can uh, see this uh, dot. Okay, let's, let's continue first. So now, now you can, uh, we've established the understanding of that product given two vectors. Now we want to be more efficient, right? So you want to, to have a, a collection of vectors because say that is your data. You have a data you've written in a, in a matrix format, say, Matrix A. So you want to do this, you want to find similarities in one flow, right? So that is where matrix multiplication would come. 
That's why I simply says it's just computing similarity set wise. So if I, if I have A as a collection of row vectors and B, so take note here, I'm saying B is a collection of column vectors. And then the A matrix multiplication of A and B gives the similarities of rows of A and columns of B. That's just how the, the rule is established. So first you have the rule and then we, we follow, we follow the rule. So to matrix multiply, you need the row and then that product it with the column of, of the next one, right? I'm assuming uh, you've uh, seen or have done mat matrix multiplication. So, but usually your, your data are, are, are on the same format. Say it's a collection of rows, right? So you have P and Q, both of the same data, all a collection of rows, not by column. So in order to re find the relation between these two, this is where you introduce the transpose. It, the transpose is there, not because it's fancy, but just to follow this rule. Because as I said here, we want the row of the first vector and the column of the second vector. These are all rows. So that's, the, that's how the data was given. So, so now you just, to follow the rule, you take the transpose of this, which converts rows into columns. That's the meaning of trans, transpose of a matrix. So hence, you also would see this uh, while reading uh, research uh, papers and machine learning. And finally, um, the rank of a matrix is just a number of linearly independent uh, rows, columns. Um, when is it not linearly independent? It's, uh, it's the easier question to answer. It is not linearly independent if you can uh, Replic if you can replicate the one row or one column using all the other rows or columns by some linear combinations of them. Let's say you have your third row, you can produce your third row by summing your first and second row. Then those uh, matrices, those uh, are not linearly independent, that set of rows. Okay, so I think we're done with the basics and uh, ready to introduce the main theorem of this uh, presentation, the SVD theorem. Okay, I'm not gonna read this to you, but I'm gonna try to help you how, how, how to read the theorem. Because <laughs> our brain will, might, might get overloaded with all the informations that are there. So many, so many things to look at, right? What's the main thing that takes your eye? When, when you saw this, you saw that you have an A, which seems like an M by N matrix, and um, it became three. Hence the word decomposition there, SVD of A is a decomposition of this form. So at least now, that's what we get. Let's understand that A, the SVD is decomposing a matrix into three matrix, okay? And then you add up your knowledge now. Um, so what are these matrix uh, U and V? Are they something special? Is it written here? Yes, it says with an orthogonal matrix, blah, blah, and another orthogonal matrix V. So they are or orthogonal matrix, matrices, U and V, and do you know what an orthogonal matrix is? If not, then you should search first, right? I can uh, remind you what an orthogonal matrix is. It is uh, basically that rows and columns are orthonormal vectors. When we say orthonormal vectors, meaning uh, the rows and columns have size one, and that uh, if, uh, if we take the dot product then of pairwise of rows and columns, then it will be zero. So we know the description of these guys here. And then, so what about sigma? Uh, one obvious observation is that this, this middle matrix here has the same size of the first one. 
m by n by n and then uh, is there, it says something here sigma is an m by n matrix where i i when you see i i that just means the diagonal usually if you're talking about matrix um, i i is greater than or equal to zero and zero otherwise so a bit mostly zero that's oh and then we miss this guy here rank the rank of matrices between the minimum of uh, of the size of the length of your matrix the smaller part okay so now let's get some key pointers after looking at this uh, theorem key pointers would be that the SVD applies to all matrices and always exists. How, how did I, how did I get that? Um, after stating that it's an M by N matrix with rank R in which all matrices can be, it already gave us the decomposition, right? So there seems to be no problem. And always exists, probably we need to work on that but i'm giving it for free now would always exist and orthogonal matrices u and v acts as basis changes you will see this clearly later why why is it basis changes but from the word orthogonal matrix here and what i describe what they are they are, they are filled with orthonormal rows or columns u and v then you would kind of should be able to relate that for a basis right and next one um this uh so by convention what how the computation would fall would fall is that the singular values are arranged in the in decreasing order uh, sigma one is uh, bigger than or equal than sigma two and up to sigma r. Sigma r, as that's the smallest one. Depends on the length. Also, there since uh, sigma might not be a square because your initial matrix might not be a square, then we would have some padding. So if this uh, length is smaller, then we would follow the, the, the limit here would be the length of this one, which apparently is n, and we will pad here. So to have uh, the same size as a, as this one, right? This should be m by n, it says here m by n, okay? Just give, this is just giving us what would be the picture of uh, sigma. Either we pad here or we pad zeros here. And then, um, sorry. And then let's go to geometric intuition of um, SVD. So say we start with the collection of points which are which compose the circle so this blue region here what this uh, arrow tells us is that uh, applying a linear transformation a to the circle turns it into an ellipse which is also now in the 3d dimension still is flat but it's now in a 3D dimension. So of course one can readily compute from here to here by simply applying A to all these points. But what the SVD tells us is, uh, gives us the story. How did this circle became an ellipse in 3D? And the story composed of this three parts which uh, if we want to be precise, which are linear transformations. 
So it tells us that we apply three linear transformations from the circle to become like this. First is the V transpose, and then the sigma, and then the U. And so what uh, the first linear transformations, as I said earlier, U and V are basis changes, right? So, so what is the basis change here? That we have a rotation. I wrote here domain because I am rotating this vector in a similar domain, which is 2D. So this uh, V transpose here, the orthogonal uh, the basis change would be changing this to E2 and E1, and then applying the sigma now, this is our stretching or shrinking with a possibility of uh, adding a new dimension. This is not always the case, but in our example and also in this illustration, indeed, there was a, there is an additional dimension in which that means it's like a sticker, right? You kind of lift the sticker from, from where it was, the paper, which is 2D, and you, you take it out, and now it's, it's on your hands, which is in the 3D uh, space. And then you rotate. That. Now you're rotating in 3D, right? You're not rotating in this 2D dimension, which you cannot see the different, that you actually rotated, right? If these arrows are not there, and if, if you only see the circle, there's no change, there's rotation. A, a circle is rotation invariant. That's, so, so this is the story, rotation, stretching and shrinking, possibly a new dimension, and another rotation, now in the code, code domain, which is now in 3D. We went to 3D because of this uh, sigma. And now I think it's time to, to share. Uh, where is that, sorry, here, it's active, okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna share some uh, code. So this is an example on the book, 4.12. So if you have uh, read the book before this, you should know where it, where it is. So we have a linear transformation A, which is a three by two matrix and both of these guys. And this time, I want to apply this linear transformation A to a square grid, which I will call script X. And so let's see the, the result. Let's see the story first before I plan to walk you through with, this, uh, with the code. Okay, so what we see, this four, things here corresponds to this story here, four things over here. Um, I plotted a grid of points, square, and then if I apply A, which I showed you earlier, it would change this to this into 3D. And the story is that uh, what happened for this to become like this is that it was first rotated and then it was lifted, probably stretched to shrank, and then another rotation from here to here, right? This is, uh, you'll find this in the book and, but without the code, so this would be how I did it, probably there's several other ways to do it. Um, so I use a mesh grid uh, to have a point from minus one to one with spacing point one. And then on the horizontal axis, vertical axis minus one to one, uh, spacing 0 0.1. So there would be 20 
by 20, which is 400, right? And uh, here I just find the shape of your X and Y, so 20 by 20. And but um, X and Y, using X and Y to a linear transformation is not very convenient. At least I don't know how to use them as they are. So I collected the points by concatenating and the X and Y's after I've changed them into one dimension. This is what Ravel does here. So this 20 by 20 uh, would become a, a one dimensional vector. Then concatenate, concatenate, you get uh, two by 400. So these are now the points. That's why I call them points. And this with this two by 400, this three by two matrix here is easily applied. Matrix multiplication, right? You have three by two, two by 400, you get a three by 400 if you do matrix multiplication with this two. And then the next line is the command to calculate SVD, so, so in TensorFlow, I'm using a linear algebra, then SVD, and then your matrix A, which is there, and it gives you S, a U, and a V. S is, will not be given in matrix, and it's a waste of uh, resources because uh, it's mainly zero. Important thing are the diagonal. So it would give you uh, the diagonal, uh, the sing what, what we call the singular values. So in this case, we have two, why? Why do we have two? Because, as I've said earlier, would be limited by the shorter path of this, uh, the shorter side of this, which is two. We have two of this, and then um, u and v, uh, u would be three by three, so you have three by three times three by two, who, 2 by 3. And then uh, your V here. Probably this, it's better to comment about this full matrices later on. When, uh, so, so far, if we put this full matrices here, this follows our orientation here. Really, what, what we did there is exactly this one. If if uh, if we have this full matrix as equals true, otherwise it's slightly different. But uh, will be I can explain that better later in in context. But now let's just follow. Uh, um, uh, just to uh, uh, interrupt uh, here is uh, S is the uh, sigma. Uh, yes, the singular values. Yes. Yep. Uh, okay. But it's not a matrix. As uh, it's only uh, it's only this uh, uh, this guys. So mm -hmm. so we have two, right? Mm -hmm. We have three by two, right? Mm -hmm. So so this we we are only up to sigma two now, mm -hmm. sigma one and sigma two. Cool. So that's so that's why we have uh, two here. So is it a diagonal matrix? Huh? Is it a diagonal matrix? No, 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 it's, it's, it's not a matrix. It's, it's one dimensional. It's just a collect, it's just a list of these guys, just sigma one and sigma two, that's it. It's a vector of the diagonal. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. So in theory, you're, you, have, you need to construct a, a, a diagonal matrix out of it, but, but the program doesn't give you a diagonal matrix where most of the entries would be zero because that would be wasting memory. Yes. Yes, uh, exactly. So, okay. Um, but I think uh, the OpenCV kind of, there are some frameworks who gives the matrix. Yes, it depends, vector. but please let's try to yeah. leave the questions after the, the uh, presentation, if that's okay. 
Yes, uh, thank you. So, thank you for the questions. And also, it's not it's not really difficult to, to do the to do the matrix, given that. Oh, okay, let's uh, let's move forward. So, what I define this function to to basically just plot. It's very simple. Uh, you have a three by two uh, linear transformation that would just send. Uh, also, I'm I'm only using the square grid now. So um, this is just a rewrite, just to put them inside. Ah, so points is uh, two by 400, right? And A is three by two. So the shape of this is three by 400. Why is that uh, important? Because if you now want to plot it, um, my plot would be on the second one, this one, right? because this is after application of, of A. So this would be a second subplot, projection 3D, and uh, linear transformations zero of, uh, on the coordinate 0, 1, and 2. We can do that because we have uh, a 3 by 400 uh, representation uh, here. So it says linear, apply the linear transformation A to script X, which is a, our collection of points. And this is just a shorthand for matrix multiplication. I'm not sure if that's only in TensorFlow, right? Um, so um, that's it. Rotation also the same. So instead of uh, using A now, this I'm using a V transpose. So we are now here. It's using V transpose from uh, the, the square, which is from here to here. Um, okay. And uh, it gives us the, the rotation, right? And same, same with, uh, with this one. Okay, so, uh, and then I think this is just, so what, any, any, just, just give it any linear transformation, as long as it's three by two, then it, it would tell you initially what happens if you apply the, the transformation, this one, um, and this is the V transpose. What happens if you do the sigma and then finish? Okay, I think we can go back to the slides. Okay. Um, eigenvalue decomposition versus uh, singular value decomposition. With, I'm not going to discuss eigenvalue decomposition. It's, uh, if you are interested, this is on, uh, still on chapter four of the book. And it is before this, this topic of singular value decomposition. So uh, some quick bits about it. What, hap what, is, uh, what are the differences and similarities? Eigenvalue decomposition, what it does is uh, you have a matrix A and it divides it into, again, three matrices, decompose it into three matrices, P, D, and P inverse. And uh, so it's essentially you're only using two, right? P and D, because you will know P inverse from P. So here you're using three, you need a U, sigma, and and a v and as i've commented earlier uh, svd would always exist while eigenvalue decomposition would only be for square matrices and if you can find such p the the u and v here oh, this is not so clear uh, what I mean here, basis chains are rotations. It's because uh, I relate this with this U and V here. 
And we said that they are orthogonal matrices, right? And then this, this would follow because of that. But for this one, it's not necessarily rotations. The basis changes P here is not necessarily rotations. Well, both of them compose of three linear mappings. And uh, the domain and codomain would have the same dimension. We can, we can check that. Why? Because if these are square matrices, then nothing is changing, right? And meanwhile, here, as we have uh, seen earlier, we've went from 2D to 3D. That's why it can be different. And diagonal entries of D are not always, because these are uh, eigenvalues, right? Uh, so the di diagonal entries here are eigenvalues, not always real and non-negative, because um, if, if one is familiar, um, they are solutions of some equations when, when you talk about eigenvalues. So a solution of something, let's say x squared plus one equals zero is not real, right? So that's why this can be complex. Meanwhile, here, SVD, they're always real and non-negative. This is why we can arrange them also. If they're real and non-negative and then arrangement is possible and we know the arrangement the biggest is the first one and then they become smaller and smaller and smaller okay um these are my comments for the difference of these two and hmm i'm thinking do i need to go here first uh other product illustration Okay, I think I need to chat about this first. This uh, comes from the book, example 4.14, and finding structure and movie ratings. So what we have here, this is supposedly the data. So these three people, Ali, Beatrice, and uh, Chandra, gave ratings to these four movies, Star Wars, Blade Runner, Family, Delicatessen, I don't know how, I don't do French. Um, so, uh, we are, the book tries to convince us that you can give, or find a structure using SVD, right? And so if we don't see the scholars first, we ignore the color, the three matrices here, will be computed instantaneously, right? By the command we did earlier. It would give us a four by four, because this is a four by three matrix. Give us a four by four matrix, and then a four by three, because the middle one's the same here, if we are using the full matrix command. And lastly, see, three by three. Now, um, before doing something fancy, let's do something basic. So what, what do we actually do here? Well, we matrix multiply, right? Okay, so how do you matrix multiply? Well, you take the first row, multiply it by this one, then this one too, multiply by this one, right? And then, so let's look at that, what happened there. We multiply this guys to here. So if we do that for all the rows, basically being killed, right? What is left alive is this being multiplied to this one, right? So there's some kind of uh, relationship there. And uh, now this, uh, what happens when we multiply this, this one, then this row would multiply to this columns. 
that means this guy is going to touch this row here. And um, so if we uh, think of uh, maybe this, like a, as the book suggested, uh, if we can, if we assume that this is kind of uh, space of us movies with uh, for each row, okay, and then this would be a space of st viewers. In terms of column, we would uh, make sense that. Um, this column over here is related to this one and and that the if we're checking the absolute values this one would be related to this too and that would produce a big a bigger number which apparently is the rating bit of Ali and Beatrice giving Star Wars and Blade Runner high uh, high rating, high score. So you can high, you can think, probably this is a sci how sci-fi is the movie, right? So given a row, so the first element would be like, how sci-fi is the movie? And the second one would be, how French is the movie? Uh, this one I'm not so sure if it's uh, if it's really about love. Being the sci-fi, it was quite clear, right? Um, these guys were affected by this, and uh, given, given a high score by both of these two. So that's how we kind of oh, excuse me. Uh, okay, and this this column here is related to this. Again, if you check matrix multiply this and uh, to here, you would see that that this would be connected to to this number here, where all other things would be zero, and so that's why maybe the Frenchness of the movie. And then there's not much difference here, right? So you can see the absolute value of this too. If this is indeed being the sci-fi-ness of the movie, it has an absolute value of 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 for Star Wars and Blade Runner. Well, nearly zero for a million and 1.5 for this one. Being French, if we assume that, then it's indeed beating a high score here. So I'm not sure if this really <laughs> This is correct, or this is why. Doesn't really matter. Um, okay, what I want to say is that uh, this is some kind of uh, analysis that uh, that was given to us. That one can do using um, SVD. Do I have other comments? Oh, sorry. Not much. Uh, okay, so. Uh, with that, um, before I continue, uh, I'd like to recall what an outer product means. An outer product given A of length 4 and B of length 3. So the outer product of uh, A and B would be a matrix of size 4 three and how how do how do we do it um basically is uh if you think this as a column this one like four you get the first column of the outer product as individual products of zero call this column to, to zero so you get zero here and then this column times one, you get the same. And then this column times two, you get the same here. 
Now, if I ask you, what is the rank of this matrix? What would be the answer? Well, the answer would be one, right? Why? Because by definition, we have built this matrix using only one column, right? That means this matrix has rank one. Okay, I think now we're ready to, to move and find a different way of writing uh, um, our SVD, the composition. Okay, so what we are saying here is that, by the way, this, this notation here, UI, VI transpose is what I just defined an outer product, okay? And this sigma I is just your uh, singular vectors. So if we have this example here, um, so what do, how we know that by doing one by one, this row times this column, this row times this column, the definition of metric multiplications, the, these guys are related to this one. They will be affected by this one, right? And then this row again will be related to, to this guys here. But all the other parts are zero, right? So one can think this column here is four, and then, and then this three here, you can th think of it as uh, the outer product earlier times this one. Again, the outer product of, of this length four and this length three would be a matrix, a matrix of size four by three, right? Now you just have this as a scalar, not a, not a matrix by full matrix, but just, uh, just a number multiplying to some four by three matrix. So this is uh, what uh, this notation here is giving. The book would tell you that AI, A sub I would be a matrix of rank one and that the matrix a of rank R would be a sum of rank one matrix. And I think I just proved to you by showing this that an outer product is indeed rank one, right? And, and so the, it, this is just a different way of uh, manipulating and rewriting uh, our SVD. But then this gives us for some more playfulness, right? Now you can say, oh, okay, so, so you have a matrix uh, A and now I can put it as a sum, just a sum of this, uh, of this uh, rank one matrices, just R of them, right? That's important, R of them. So what if I only sum two of them, just a few of them? Why would you think that? Well, you said the sigmas getting smaller and smaller. So that means their contribution is smaller and smaller. So I just don't use them. So, so that, is, uh, that is one way of thinking how, how one came up with with approximations. Uh, yeah, let's not pay attention much with this uh, notation here, but uh, so instead of summing fully by R, the sum of few, which is K. And then, so that's an approximation. Now let's see this in, in action. Um, I've, uh, I'm using this uh, photo here of the game I'm recently playing. And this photo is of size 
d to 5 by 600. Ah, also, for, for people who would be reusing this uh, collab, uh, you can put any, any photo here, just any copy image address and then and just, just plot it on, there would be some, uh, some box here. And so this photo, we would, which is of 325 by 600, we would apply SVD and it would give us, let's investigate, S, 325, okay, cool because it's the smaller of the two. So there will be 325 of these uh, sigmas, all right? And the first one, the U would be 325, the, the one on the left and the one on the, oh, here I just made a diagonal out of S. But then this does not have, I'm not using the, the full matrix, right? There's no padding here. So this is one uh, convenient way of, uh, of when you don't use uh, the padding. Actually by default, this, it doesn't have the padding. Why do I say that it doesn't have the, the padding? Because the, if we make a, uh, this vector here, the S would be 325 by 325, while this is 325 by 600. And just to remind you, the, oh, sorry, it should be the same, right? If you're using the full matrix, this guy is the same size as, as this one. But this time we're not doing the padding. So we can maintain this as a square if we don't use the padding. Not very strict, but um, I'm just being clear. And so what I'm doing here now is I just plot U, V, and there's no point in plotting S as a matrix. So I plot the, the magnitude, the size of S since they're positive and they're arranged, you can see here that of those 325 sigmas, they go to zero quite fast, right? Even before reaching 100, they're already very, very small around here. And uh, so this is the plot of U. You can see some, some, some patterns here, right? some uh, kind of slow change of white and black and then being a faster change of white and black. The reason it's gray already here is because the change is, uh, is so fast already. So, um, and this is V star, so that's why the pattern is up here. If, if you take, uh, because what it gives us is V, right? So V is initially not like this, but kind of same orientation as this first one. And then V star gives that. Um, these are a bunch of functions. So this is where I want to focus now. We have 325 of those R earlier. And uh, what if we use only few? That is our slide, right? It's matrix approximation. If we use 20 of those, which is 6.15% of all the singular values, then we get our, this is the rough estimate of, of the, our photo. Until how much would, would it give us some nice, this is still rough. 
Not so bad, but you get what I mean. Um, um, sorry. So now we're changing K into something smaller, not full, right? So this is the point of uh, matrix multiplication. There's some errors, but then it's, uh, it's optimized if, if we do it uh, this way, using, uh, uh, using this format, writing A into sum of uh, rank one matrix AI and then just summing a few. So this is just an illustration of, of that. And, oh, weird. Okay, yes, so, so probably I need to rerun this. <laughs> or otherwise, will this run? Oh, it seems still working. Uh, this one is just, I just played with the, with the singular values. So what I did is uh, I multiply their location so the first one's multiplied by one, the second one's multiplied by two. So that means uh, the, the last one is multiplied by a bigger number, right? Which is now 325, is it? Yeah. So what we see is if, if you're familiar with, uh, with uh, image processing, this, this is a photo with a high, a high frequency photo, or um, what do you name that uh, that filter that only lives the high frequency? Uh, is it Sobel? So, uh, so anyway, so this is an observation. This would be an observation that uh, that the singular values, the first few singular values are related to, to some kind of lower frequencies. That's why we can still see something here. While the, the lower you go, singular values would be related to higher frequencies. That's why when we increase these guys here, which are supposed to be small, it gave us a, field, uh, a picture with, with effect. And this is, this is just the reverse of that. <laughs> Instead of multiplying um, the location by the size, I just divide it. And it, there's not much meaning in this. It's just, uh, just playing. So I think, I think that's all I, I have prepared. So thank you, thank you for, for listening.